Creatine is one of the most popular supplements of all time, but maybe it's new to you, and just like any other supplement, you might be wondering, is it safe? Well, the short answer is yes. Yes, creatine is safe. But let's take a closer look to give you more confidence about how we arrive at that answer. After 20 plus years and over 1,000 studies and billions of servings of creatine ingested, we have some pretty strong data regarding creatine in general. So creatine is most commonly associated with sports and fitness. So let's take a look at what the International Society of Sports Nutrition has to say about this. The only consistently reported side effect from creatine supplementation that has has been described in the literature has been weight gain. Now, this is probably because people that are most often taking creatine are actually trying to gain muscle. It's also because creatine has this effect of pushing water into the muscles and making the muscles hold more water. But don't confuse that necessarily as gaining fat. They go on to say, available short and long-term studies in healthy and diseased populations from infants to the elderly at dosages ranging from 0.3 to 0.8 grams per kilogram per day, they mean per kilogram of body weight per day, for up to five years have consistently shown that creatine supplementation poses no adverse health risks and may provide a number of health and performance benefits. Notice that they say from infants to the elderly. They're including the two groups that are generally considered the most at-risk groups for any adverse effect when it comes to supplements or other things in our environment. For example, I live in Arizona. You know what else lives in Arizona? Scorpions. <laughs> and people can sometimes be concerned about getting stung by scorpions, and rightly so, because it does happen. The two groups that health professionals are concerned with the most are infants and the elderly. Because if stung, those are the two groups that are most likely to experience a more pronounced negative effect. Ow! Hey, if you liked today's video, please hit the like button and remember to subscribe. Thank you. They go on to say, additionally, assessments of adverse event reports related to dietary supplementation, including in pediatric populations, again, this includes infants and children, have revealed that creatine was rarely mentioned and was not associated with any significant number or any consistent pattern of adverse events. This means that when an adverse event or negative event was reported with dietary supplementation in general, creatine itself was very rarely mentioned as being associated or the cause of the adverse event. And when it was associated, it wasn't significant enough to draw the conclusion that creatine itself causes adverse events. They go into quite a bit more detail and cite multiple studies that refute negative claims in the media regarding creatine. They report that creatine supplementation does not increase musculoskeletal injuries, dehydration, muscle cramping, or gastrointestinal upset. Now, <laughs> I would argue with that last one because I personally know people who take creatine and mention mild stomach discomfort. And that doesn't happen to everybody and it's pretty rare, but maybe you've heard that too, or maybe it's happened to you. This tends to be, as I mentioned, rare, and but it's more common if someone is doing what's called a loading dose, when they're taking quite a bit more creatine than they normally would on a day-to-day -day basis to increase creatine stores initially. They mention that based on the scientific research, creatine in many cases has actually been shown to improve many of the negative conditions mentioned. And they go on to present multiple research studies that have shown that creatine has not been associated with an increased incidence of renal dysfunction. And they finish by saying, while some have suggested that individuals with pre-existing renal disease consult their physician prior to creatine supplementation, in abundance of caution, these studies and others have led researchers to conclude that there is no compelling evidence that creatine supplementation negatively affects renal function in healthy or clinical populations. That's a pretty strong statement. And if you like strong statements, here are a few more. Creatine monohydrate supplementation is not only safe, but has been reported to have a number of therapeutic benefits in healthy and diseased populations, ranging from infants to the elderly. Again, you know, that full range of from beginning to end of life, right? There is no compelling scientific evidence that the short or long-term use of creatine monohydrate up to 30 grams per day for five years has any detrimental effects on otherwise healthy individuals or among clinical populations who may benefit from creatine supplementation. 
If proper precautions and supervision are provided, creatine monohydrate supplementation in children and adolescent athletes is acceptable and may provide a nutritional alternative with a favorable safety profile to potentially dangerous anabolic androgenic drugs. Connected with this last one, they also recommend creatine supplementation only be considered for use by younger athletes who are involved in a serious competitive supervised training, are consuming a well-balanced and performance-enhancing diet, are knowledgeable about appropriate use of creatine, and do not exceed recommended dosages. Here's another strong statement about the safety of creatine. Label advisories on creatine products that caution against usage by those under 18 years old, while perhaps intended to insulate their manufacturers from legal liability, are likely unnecessary. Given the science supporting creatine safety, including in children and adolescents, <laughs> Did you catch that? They are so confident of the safety of creatine, they mention that label advisories for those under the age of 18 are likely unnecessary. Again, that's pretty strong, right? Now I've been saving what I would consider the best one, their strongest statement for last. Given all the known benefits and favorable safety profile of creatine supplementation reported in the scientific and medical literature, it is the view of the ISSN meaning the International Society of Sports Nutrition, that government legislators and sport organizations who restrict and or discourage use of creatine may be placing athletes at greater risk, particularly in contact sports that have risk of head trauma and or neurological injury, thereby opening themselves up to legal liability. This includes children and adolescent athletes engaged in sport events that place them at risk for head and or spinal cord injury. Injury. Whoa, that's pretty crazy. If I'm understanding that statement correctly, they're saying that creatine is so safe that restricting it or restricting its use by athletes is actually unsafe. Wow. Hey, if you're still here, you are awesome. And I hope this answers the question, is creatine safe? Ow!